Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to East Central Missouri and the world, and welcome to the James Strong Show podcast, podcast number 137. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for making us a part of your day. I appreciate it. This podcast was recorded on the morning of Sunday, August the 25th, from the James Strong Studio in Western St. Charles County. It's been a couple of weeks since I did a podcast, but uh, there's been a lot going on in my life in the last couple of weeks. Uh, it's just a short, uh, a short synopsis. Uh, last, no, two weeks ago, I guess, I guess it'll be two weeks ago on Monday, uh, I was at work planning a trip and uh, left work about 4.30, picked up the rental car, and I had another pain in my side like I had had before. Uh, I thought, well, this will have to go away because I have a trip coming up and a vacation coming up after that. Well, by uh, by Monday night, uh, the pain was really bad. And uh, so much so that uh, I made the decision in the middle of the night on Monday that I was going to cancel the trip and go to the doctor. Well, I got up on Tuesday morning and the pain had gotten much worse. Went to the doctor and I was diagnosed with appendicitis. Wednesday, the appendix came out. Thursday... I came home from the hospital. Friday, I went to work. Saturday, we left for a week-long vacation on Lake Michigan, and we just got back last night, Saturday night. But uh, appendix is gone. I'm still a little sore uh, from the the surgery. Other than that, just fine. Had a great vacation, fantastic vacation. Um, The family and I, we go, and that's all four of our boys and their families, so a house full of people. Uh, generally we go to somewhere on Lake Michigan, usually in Michigan itself. This time we stopped short of Michigan and we, uh, we went to Michigan city, Indiana. Lots of good things about Michigan city, Indiana. One of the most being that it's about an hour and a half closer from where we were, where we normally stay. So it's just a five and a half hour drive from our house, five hour drive to, uh, from the house of the kids who live in the city. But, uh, yeah, I mean it's it's less it's it's more than an hour closer than where we normally stay. Uh, five adult families living under one roof for a week uh, can be challenging because when you have five adult families who do things five different ways, it's all about the compromise, always taking others' feelings into consideration, and uh, doing what's best for everyone and not necessarily best for you. But it was a fantastic vacation uh, right on the lake. Uh, the weather was about as perfect as it was going to be. A little warmer than uh, we expected during the first part, a little cooler during the second part, but uh, a great vacation. And again, I've said this many, many, many times. Vacation is something that you just have to do. You just have to. Uh, so try your best to plan vacation. Minimum a week, preferably more. Uh, go away, even if that means just go away uh, a couple hours from the house and, and camp or stay with relatives or, or stay in a hotel or do something, but just get away. It uh, Vacation, it, it, it releases all the tensions. And when you come back, you're glad to be home. You might even be glad to go back to work. Who knows? I'm. <laughs> we'll find out Monday if I'm in that boat or not. But uh, vacation is worth it. Please, please, please take my advice. And always take a vacation. I love vacations. This one was was better than most. Read an article. uh, Read a lot of articles. Did a lot of reading on vacation. Uh, Most of this or much of this vacation was all about relaxation because, uh, like I said, a couple of days before we left for vacation, I got cut on. So I had lots of rest, doctor's orders. And uh, of course, I always listen to the doctors. So I did a lot of reading, a lot of researching, a lot of uh, relaxation. But I read an article about a guy, Francis Ford Coppola. Everybody knows who he is. He's a uh, director, producer, did the Godfather movies, among others. But he's been around a long time. Uh, I, remember, I remember when he first came out, he was one of the up and coming young directors. Well, he's 80 years old now, over 80 years old now. And uh, basically hasn't made a lot of uh, a lot of major motion pictures in decades. Uh, he makes an indie film here or there, but uh, really doesn't need to uh, because he has plenty of money. And the way Francis Ford Coppola made his money 
surprised me. Um, I mean, he produced and directed the Godfather movies, uh, Apocalypse Now, which, if you remember when Apocalypse Now was first, uh, I guess when the concept came out. Okay, this was going to be the quintessential important uh, Vietnam movie, movie about the Vietnam War. But nobody wanted to pick it up. No major studio wanted to fund Apocalypse Now, mainly because it was about the Vietnam War, which was very controversial. Nobody wanted to touch it. And Coppola said, look, I've won four Oscars or five Oscars. How many, I've ever many Oscars he had won at that, at that point in his career. But still, no one would take it on. So he went ahead and bankrolled it himself. He had enough money. And it almost broke him. Delays, delays, and more delays. If you remember, uh, his leading man, Martin Sheen, had a heart attack and had to recover. So they had to suspend filming. Uh, filming was originally supposed to take six weeks. It was done in the Philippines. They built a whole very expensive set. And then a typhoon came and destroyed it all. So they had to rebuild it again. What should have been six weeks of filming ended up being 18 months of filming. That film lost a ton of money. And it was Coppola's money that it lost. But the silver lining to the dark cloud was that Coppola owns the rights. And he's reissued that movie once already. Uh, he's going to reissue it again with another cut, a redo type cut. And um, so he ended up making money in the end on that movie. Uh, but that's not why Coppola has so much money. The Coppola name may or may not mean something else to you. If you're a wine connoisseur, uh, Coppola wines are good. They're good wines. They're a uh, Napa area wine uh, grape. And he actually, Francis Ford Coppola and his family bought part of the old Inglenook winery. Okay. And he's made all of his money on wine. Now, here's the... Here's the interesting thing about that story and I, that, I, that I read that I really learned something, and, and you learn by reading, okay? Just because you're not in school anymore doesn't mean your, edu your education is finished. Once upon a time, Ingle, Inglenook wine was cheap jug wine, okay? You want the cheapest wine, the stuff that sits on the bottom, stuff that's going to go ahead and, and uh, a lot of people can drink off for just a little bit of money. Inglenook, that's what you bought. The cheap stuff, kind of like uh, Carlo Rossi or Ernest and Giulio Gallo. It was the same genre as, as those wines, okay? Italian Swiss Colony, that was another one. Inglenook was right in there with them, okay? Cheap wine, but a good price. Got a lot of bang for your buck. Coppola wines are really good, and they're not cheap. They're not expensive. You can get a Coppola wine for anywhere from... Uh, like nine to fifteen dollars a bottle. The reserve more, but for the most part, nine to fifteen dollars a bottle gives you a good Coppola wine. Uh, he has a good Meritage that I particularly like, a uh, Claret type wine with uh, a mixture of several different reds. I've had his uh, Cabernet. They're good wines. They are very good wines, but they're from the same vineyards that grew grapes for Inglenook. So my question is. What was the difference? Well, it was one of two things, or maybe a combination of both. Winemaking has changed from the 70s to now, when Inglenook was the, uh, the cheap wine of choice, one of the cheap wines of choice. So winemaking itself has really changed a whole lot. Kind of like um, if, you, if you eat a, uh, a, a pie that your mom made, uh, cooking it, over a campfire versus cooking it over a uh, in a, in a modern stove in a, in a modern kitchen. The modern kitchen is going to produce the better pie because you have better control over everything. So it could be that they're just making better wines now with the same grapes because of different techniques. Or maybe it's just marketing. I don't know. Or maybe a combination of both. Maybe the grapes are no better. The process is much better, but Coppola versus Inglenook, they got away from the name. I don't know. But bottom line is, that's where Coppola made his money, 
by buying a vineyard that used to be owned by a cheap jug wine company and turning it into something that's very drinkable. So hats off to Francis Ford Coppola, a true Renaissance man. My essay today has to do with Facebook hate and lies. And you think to yourself, what do you mean Facebook hate and lies? Well, there's all kinds of lies on Facebook, all kinds of hate on Facebook. And I experienced much of that on this, uh, on this trip. And uh, because in the morning while I'm drinking coffee, I would go ahead and search social media, look at stories, and I'd post stuff online, and I would have discussions with individuals, okay? And sometimes it's a discussion, which I enjoy. Sometimes it's an argument, which I can enjoy, if it's the right individual. Or sometimes it's just a hate-strewn diatribe by somebody who obviously wasn't doing much thinking. That I don't enjoy. And I tend to distance myself from those types of one-sided conversations. Um, But Facebook hate and lies. On Facebook and on all social media, you basically have the freedom to say what you want. Okay? Kind of. Until they decide that you can't say it anymore, which is what they do on Twitter a lot. Not my opinion. Uh, It's a fact. And I heard it from the horse's mouth. That would be Jack Dorsey, the guy who runs Twitter. Okay? Facebook's not quite so bad, in my opinion. But... You always have the freedom to say what you want, but the freedom to say what you want will define you. So be careful. Now, is social media a flawed vehicle? Of course it is. But it's what we use today. I mean, the dead pecker bench in the town square was what they used to use. It was a flawed vehicle, okay? People didn't listen to one another. Well, maybe they listened, but they had bad hearing, so they couldn't hear it. So they <laughs> they uh, they heard something that wasn't said. But all types of communication are flawed. And social media is certainly a flawed vehicle. But it's what we use today. It's why I use it, okay? Because you can get the word out to a lot of people. Now, it will get better. It will get better. If it doesn't get better, it will yield to another vehicle. Remember MySpace? Of course you don't. Well, maybe you do, but nobody uses it anymore because MySpace didn't improve. It didn't evolve. It didn't change with the times. Now, I enjoy lots of meaningful, thoughtful discussion, primarily with people I know well and people that I don't know very well at all, okay? and it's, But it's through these discussions that I've furthered my association with some and dismiss the thoughts of others. Now, rarely, if ever, will you see me piling on to a topic that I wholeheartedly agree with. Rarely. Now, because ditto isn't a discussion. Okay? It's not a discussion. I will, if I see a person whom which, whom with which I agree with and respect, I will back him up maybe with a little the like click, or if, if people start jumping on him, I'll defend him, okay, or her. But just to say, ditto, that's not a discussion, okay? Listening to an opposing viewpoint, considering it, then discussing it, exercises and educates the mind. Listening and considering is not the same as going with the crowd. I'm going to say that again. Listening and considering is not the same as going along with the crowd. No more than amending your viewpoint isn't flip-flopping. And they do this in politics all the time. Why, so-and-so, he's a flip-flopper. Well, maybe he's not a flip-flopper. Maybe he thought one thing, somebody else brought up something that he didn't consider, and he thought, wow, I've never thought of it that way. Maybe you're right. Maybe I was wrong. (laughs) That's not flip-flopping, folks. Now, there's a difference between having a viewpoint, listening to an opposing view, considering it, understanding that you may have been wrong, and amending your opinion, than saying something different depending on who you speak to. Okay? Uh, If you do a, uh, a, a stump for campaigning, a campaign stump, 